welcome to Out of the Fold. My guest today is Omkaran, a former Hindu. I really wasn't expecting a lot of what he ended up telling me about his experience with Hinduism. In the U.S., New Age spirituality is loosely based on its teachings, as well as Buddhism, pantheism, and bits and pieces of others, so I had to drop my pre-existing notions to be able to hear the truth. I ask you to try to do the same thing before listening further. Fundamentalism exists everywhere, and I'd love to see people who have walked away from Abrahamic religions reach out and actively welcome people who have left non-Abrahamic religions. I'd also like to request that you listen to this episode all the way through to the end. Omkaran opened up a topic that I should probably have addressed sooner. No religious organizations, companies, or individuals were contacted for comment about any of the content of this episode. The views expressed are strictly those of the ones expressing them. Our conversation began on a Sunday morning for me, a Sunday afternoon for him. I was born here, India, Hyderabad. Um, as far as I can remember, childhood was actually pretty good. You know, it was, you could say it was like bright. Though we had a lot of problems, we were, we were happy. Uh, we are, my dad's job is kind of like a transferable job, so we kept going through states and stuff. But for the past five, six, and I don't know, six to eight years, we've been settled here only. Uh, yeah. The my my mom, the whole family is religious. My mom was the more religious one. She her basic thing was to raise our kids in such a way like she thought would be the right part, because that path helped her get out of a lot of troubles she was facing. So she was with us from the day one. I have a sister. She's elder to me. So we were raised in such a way that to follow what my mom was following. So the thing was, in India, I'm talking about the current, uh, the religion trend. It's not current, but right now it is like people follow gurus. You must have heard about a lot of gurus in India. It's like a falling kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, I didn't know whenever, because the thing is, I think if you look back, uh, our, our culture, maybe Hinduism must have lost its way in between because of, I don't know, maybe Britishers coming in. I don't know what happened, but most people were kind of not so sure about what was actually in their religion, what all things it uh, hold or held, held up. So... So this following of uh, gurus is very prevalent here. Uh, Mostly all the gurus in India speak for, basically they are like, they speak for God or or they are like, you know, they, what do you call the word? I'm not getting the word. The spokesperson, yeah. Mm -hmm. They they kind of tell people or preach. But here's the thing, the whatever gurus are who are prevalent the most prevalent the reason why people start following them or anything is i would according to me at least i would say is because they say the gurus say that they perform certain miracles like they they did something or uh, what do you call it supernatural mm-hmm. or or i would call it pseudoscience maybe mm-hmm. so it's those things which you know grabs people's eyes and ears and put belief in that because uh, they find it different. Like we normal people, when we come to hear about such things, we feel like, I mean, we are used to certain kind of things happening around us or certain life we are living. But when people come, when like such people come and say that nah, there's something more to us than this, like I've done this or I've, uh, uh, in, in Hinduism, the major, the main concept of these gurus or whatever, or 
many religious books in hindus is basically self realization or enlightenment mm-hmm. where a person uh, supposedly uh, realizes his own true self or soul so the basic thing is according to okay the major the right now if you look uh you do know the that the major holy book of hindu is bhagavad gita so most of the following right now is based upon that book and according to that book uh everyone everyone animals or whatever living beings or whatever have a soul which passes through a cycle of birth and death or whatever so according to bhagavad gita there are like eight i i don't know exact number it must be like eight like 40 species maybe of uh, of different kind of species whatever so you pass through one of them die and take another body and and then you reach human human life because of few good things you must have done so the human life is precious the reason why you are human is according to the book is to find your true self or to find god actually or to or to put it this way to serve god for forever more mm-hmm. forever whatever so my mom she told me this later like she had a lot of troubles even she even at one point wanted to you know commit suicide because of a lot of problems in the home or whatever but she was very religious like there are a lot of gods in hinduism they're like the uncountable gods people each day we have week right monday to sunday each day would be for a specific god Mm-hmm. they would fast on certain days to please a certain god they would pray to one god to get like if you wanted if you wanted good wealth or financial situation you would worship this god god called lakshmi because she is goddess of wealth so there there are things like that so they were all following that until she came across this guru which i mentioned so she put her faith completely in it and she brought us up in that way we used to have a lot of they they are throughout india there are ashrams and stuff where you go and participate in certain camps which they held kids they keep and uh, and try to they say to mold your character or try to help yourself out of it or whatever so we used to go like we used to we were participating on it like on on a daily basis and yearly we used to have summer camps or winter camps where they would send only the kids to to participate and understand the religion better so they used to make us do certain like we used to get up at 4:30 do meditation pray to god do yoga so and honestly the thing is even i never bothered much about what was true around that time because as much as i left believing in it the things which were happening there or which they were they were good they actually help helps you to keep a proper state of mind actually that's what they train the they train you guys there for so mm-hmm. i i was kind of fine with that i never like really questioned any of such stuff but uh and the thing is i didn't know but the lot of every guru in india i would I might be saying it too much but i think every guru in india has sort of a controversy kind of thing so it was around i think um 2014 i guess uh this guru which my mom was following uh, had uh, i i believe there were like two two cases against him uh, and they were they rape cases two rape cases and uh, and lot of money laundering fraud and escaping the thing is all the institutions in uh, uh, following religious religious fundamentals they in india at least i don't know what other countries they are non taxable income actually like you you get the money you, you don't have to pay tax for it so there are lot of issues with it but those two cases and and it's a serious allegation it's it's rape uh, coming out from like two to four women i guess who uh who used to visit everyone was a devotee in any way everyone used to go and meet but those were the serious allegations but i was because you are raised from such a point of view from 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 your small you don't question so even when the cases came up surface the media whatever 
my mom didn't believe in it. Like she was like, they are just trying to defame him. That's the basic thing they go for. And uh, even I didn't open up so much. I was like, the thing is, they portray such they portray such a character in front of your followers that when such things come up, you actually would not believe it. Though I don't know if it's true or not, uh, the person is still in jail. Uh, it's been like four years. He's still in jail, but. But that's the thing, because they portray such a character to us and we believe in them and we believe that they help us in any ways. Like, I don't know. I, the thing is, it's all coincidences if you look at it. And if it doesn't work, basically, it, it is kind of your whole fault. Maybe you're not putting enough faith in it. So that's how it kind of uh, revolves around it. So, uh, yeah. Wow. So it's like he, the, the, the guru was, um, um, it is still, um, he's still, he's still respected by people, even though he's been in prison yeah. for, this, for this amount of time. Yeah. He's still a lot. Actually, I, I would say it actually increased though. The thing is people, that's how media works. So people who are following always had the respect, even if the case came out, those people didn't lose the faith, but the other, other side of it is because the media, showed up all these things there are a lot of uh, other people who of course didn't believe in him or whatever they of course have the negative outlook so they were the ones who would come and tell us like this is serious allegations he was, he was put in jail but we would not or at least my mom didn't she still doesn't she still believes in him to to make that clear she still believes in him uh yeah so where was i and you said that um, that before this guru, um, your family yeah. sort of had the um, the polytheistic view. Um, you know, you yeah. you believed in in many gods, but then after this guru, um, it was all about this one god in particular. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'll I'll tell you why that is. So in basically in uh, in various religious texts or whatever, or what he he taught, or what other teachers teach or what even Bhagavad Gita also in a way teaches is basically your God, I mean your your guru is basically kind of like like your God or something because everybody needs a guru or teacher to help one person out in their life. So that, that's how it goes. So and uh, yeah, they were like what do you call the spokesperson for whatever teachings for. So we didn't so it just revolved around him not basically believing in a God, but according, if I am going a little off, but according to Bhagavad Gita, uh, so it says Krishna or whatever is the is the God. That's it. There, there, there are no more arguments to that. That is basically the final conclusion, though people might not accept that, but that's what he's preaching. Hmm. But yeah, so that's the thing. So that's kind of interesting. I mean, it, what 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 made your mom, or do you know what what made your mom or your family or or anybody, um, you know, just give up their their old beliefs and then immediately go into um, practicing what this guy was was teaching? The thing is, the the things which he preaches is very similar to what we were following. He doesn't. Uh, I don't know how to put it. Like, it's not like you're giving up all these gods for him. Mm. He is among them like he's also preaching what they are saying so it's not like giving up on the gods they still pray we have every house has a puja room all the gods photos are all there we pray to all their different festivals time of the year where you pray to certain god or whatever but to look upon someone to what do you call guide us guru teach us so you you stick to that person and it depends on the person so you because my mom liked him because Come on, she liked what he was saying, mm -hmm. so so that's why she she thought like he is the one. And uh, and in Hinduism, there's a greater emphasis on following a guru or believing in one. It's been throughout history. Like I don't know if you heard, there's Shirdi Sai Baba. I don't know if it's his name. Uh, he is one of them. Like. I don't know. I don't understand the thing in India. Like, I don't know why there are such followings over a person. Like, I understand what they're preaching and it might be good. But the problem with Indian religion mentality is they don't question enough. They don't actually, I should say they don't question at all. At all. They'll just take 
whatever they say or whatever is written in a certain book to be true and and follow it uh, so that's how it goes that's how it works here <laughs> well i mean it's 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 fascinating to me when you say that because in um in christianity and in islam um mormonism i mean it's 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 so similar you know we 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 like to think that um <clears throat> or you know i was when i was raised into into christianity i mean it was it was taught that you know there is only one god you know and then you know that was so um that was just sort of this thing where where we 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 were taught that that was unique um and that we were we were taught not to question it at all but what's fascinating to me is that you're you're telling me that you know you were raised into a religion and then this then this guru taught you um taught your family or, or your mother this um this other way of um <clears throat> excuse me um this other way of 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 worship um but that you still had those those similar views that like you couldn't um you couldn't yeah. question it um so it it's it's fascinating to me to hear that that it's not even really all that different yeah that's that's one thing uh, which i was wondering to tell that it's all just uh, what do you call a religion or whatever it's just what do you call an accident of birth you would say right because we are <laughs> born in this geography because i was born in india and you were born there or someone born in israel or whatever right. they happen to follow that and they think that is true and that is right and they don't i don't know how it became like that because after i started questioning and seeing started seeing things the earlier form of not hinduism i would say the earlier recounts of the scriptures of relating to hinduism but actually questioning things i i i i went through a lot of things uh, actually i didn't come across myself i i saw it in this tv series called cosmos by carl sagan where he recounts that in 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 one of the vedas uh the the person who writes it is actually questioning as to what is the what was there before anything was even there like that was the level of you know intellect and questioning sense but right now it's all brought down and boiled up to a point where you know this is the god this is the religion these are the gods and that's it you you choose which one works out for you huh so people uh, do do you do you get the impression that a lot of people go through what what your family went through them or that they were they were raised to believe polytheistically and then eventually they just end up following one guru in in particular and that's just what they believe they're supposed to do I don't know I think it's basically depends on the person's what do you call intuition like mm-hmm. they think yeah we found the guy or we found the one who would actually lead us out of what are the problems we are facing or whatever so you you kind of spoke positively about um your experience with um with the indian religion when you were when you were growing up um what made you decide that you um that well let, let's start with this so what what do you believe now or or what don't you believe now uh i if i'm being honest like i don't criticize what was there and though there are a lot of every religion has that contradicting views mm-hmm. about what we have learned through science right now and what was prevalent back then so i don't pick on them so much but it's but those things are quite the huge ones which would decide how your mentality is when you are a grown up man like so right now i don't uh, believe in any god or a god or anything i'm just an atheist and people say like like my friends are also like that but what they say is like we can't the explanation for all that is there right now can't be described through only science they still think that there has to be some supernatural force to describe something you know so that would be i think uh, and and that force is what we will not ever know about so i think that would be agnostic but i i don't believe in supernatural stuff too yeah so you believe in like a connection between things but you don't necessarily think that that's something that was uh that can be described in a specific you know holy book you know it, it's not about doctrine it's just about the way that the universe works uh yeah yeah exactly i like that so what made you decide to 
believe that instead of just going back to being more devoutly what you were what you were raised into instead of just what the what that guru was was teaching i was i was i was very i was very devotional actually honestly but here's the thing when you come across the contradicting things i mean it's a common among everyone who is trying to find a place mm-hmm. to question of of their state in religion as to because it doesn't what you call complement with what we are living right now mm-hmm. uh, it so funnily i realized all that while i was being devotional like i used to used to meditate a lot daily one hour i used to pray a lot but when i was doing that is when i realized that it's we feel that connection that what we call uh, love of god or whatever because we were taught to believe in it not because it is natural to us because i remember like when according here here we we chant mantras we chant so that it evokes a certain feeling so in the beginning of course i i wouldn't get the feeling or so they would say like you you're not doing well enough so it's like teaching yourself to I, that's what i understood now to believe in that lie and then you get the feeling that yeah god is you know mm-hmm. there or something like that so whenever i used to hear any 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 what do you call any shloka shlokas are like verses of a scripture okay mm-hmm. uh, i used to feel the i don't know what do you call it, it it's just i would say it's just a uh, dopamine or whatever that that's the whole point right like when we listen to good music you get the release of of i don't know euphoria or whatever you get the release yeah. so i thought yeah so i thought when i was reciting all that i thought god was doing that to me so i was like i was being very grateful for that <laughs> I'm so sorry <laughs> i'm so sorry yeah so i thought i was being so god is being so grateful to me that i was actually feeling him so i think that's what they call god you know that that feeling of oneness with that feeling you know yeah it's a dopamine high yeah, yeah. it's a dopamine nothing more than that it's <laughs> i don't know he didn't i thought i thought that was true but when you start to look into it you realize it's actually not that way yeah no yeah yeah did you end up doing any research into like the history of hinduism and and did that make you question anything further or was it just that you were you know reading reading the books reading the scriptures and and paying attention to what you felt um or was it or was it more you know logical um in nature do you do you remember it was i would say it's more logical than emotional because i understood emotional we, sh- we shouldn't trust always our emotions that's what i understood it took me an year it's not that i made it for one month and i realized that that it's it's not true it's a lie it's not like that you so th- I, as i told you the basic scripture for hinduism is bhagavad gita so i was like why not i anyway love the guru so i was like why not just read and see why people say that to be the benchmark of hinduism for the final authority he would say the holy book right yeah yeah so i was going through the book and uh, i didn't know it there are a lot of points actually uh the one of the major things uh points was about uh w- not one the one among many was uh, how you should treat uh, sexuality or sex in general like basically it is very explicitly written there that you should not partake in sex or, or sexual activities until unless you want to have kids who would be raised to believe in the god you know mm-hmm. otherwise it was supposed to consider a sin your releasing of your of your semen was considered very unholy it was it was considered like that was the basic energy for a man at least mm-hmm. so we the book taught us to preserve it there are many techniques and all that it's not in the book about the techniques i i saw through other books but they taught how to save it up so that i don't know that that was very contra- uh, i don't know conflicting point for me because it it doesn't 
quite makes sense it, what i understood was it is kind of natural for you to release that because <laughs> the the more you repress it the more guilty you feel and when you actually do it the more guilty you feel again yeah and uh, yeah it's just kind of like cycle it it got me down really bad i understand like i don't understand how they consider like from all the issues which are there they consider masturbation as one of the you know evil things you can do or like wrong things you can do in your life from all the other things which is there so that was one of the factors which made me feel like i don't know i should it made me feel very bad so i i didn't i didn't want to believe in that anymore and that was one of the things yeah 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 just this natural thing i get that <laughs> the thing is uh the, in uh, in india the sages all these practice the practice of conserving your your what do you call the semen because they yeah. thought it held a great power in them and it it gave rise so the more you conserved it and preserved it the more i don't know intellectual or wise or the more you you know you you tend to a step towards enlightenment or whatever so that was the basic principle of that so that's why they were they were dead against it they were, they were dead against that so uh, that's one of the things yeah you know it, it's it's interesting that that you say that so i've i've heard that um in in a few different things now and actually there are um some athletes that um that really believe that if they if they don't have sex or they don't masturbate for the for a few days leading up to um you know let's say they're a boxer you know and and a few days leading yeah. up to the to their match um they'll actually you know they'll they'll um restrain feel, themselves you know they they won't masturbate yeah, they, they won't weak. have sex right but there's actually been there've actually been um some studies that have been done that show that it doesn't it doesn't work um and okay. i guess you know everybody can kind of do you know whatever works for them i think sometimes it's just a mentality you know um but um you know when you actually do that you you're you're a little bit more relaxed um you know you're less you're less tense um and you know you might think that you know boxing would require you to to have this incredible level of strength to be able to do it but being tense in any athletic competition doesn't actually help you really at all um so you know yeah. it it's it's one of those things where it's like you know it, if it helps them because it kind of allows them to um uh you know get into that mindset you know if if you feel as though holding yourself back will will allow you to do better um maybe that kind of goes to discipline um and if you feel more disciplined then you might um you might perform differently when you're actually fighting somebody in in a boxing match but other than that i mean it doesn't actually do anything for you for you physically yeah exactly like see before i knew this point i was fine <laughs> but once they tell that it causes weakness or you know all yep. those stuff i it's in christianity too like uh i didn't know you i not only christian like general uh, blind believes that i know you lose hair or whatever all that stuff so once you think it's that way you actually start your mentality actually goes that way you actually start believing that yeah i'm getting weaker yeah this is actually wrong but that again will lead you into doing more of it the more you try to repress it the more you do it it works it kind of works that way yeah and uh, you want to say something? Oh no. I, I wanted to say, No, no, yeah. no, you're you're good. Um I I was just going to I was just going to mention that I mean, you know, that's I I think um unfortunately, you know, the the more people are restricted from from doing something especially something sexual. Um you know, the the, the worse it kind of ends up coming out later. Um which I think might be why there are unfortunately so many religious leaders that are associated with um with some of the more um heinous sexual offenses out there. Ah, yeah, kind of makes sense. Yeah. Actually, uh the what I wanted to say was like even my uh, mom was like kind of, you know, like we were small. I was I was like I was just a kid and and it's normal for us to, you know, that's the that region or whatever. It was fine, but she used to tell like no uh that causes that will cause infection on on your on that area so you should not do that don't ever do that again mm mm-hmm. you no know, that that creates a negative mentality about your own body 
so you don't feel fine living in a body where you think like that it's not you know it's not right to do that i don't know that's just one of the points i wanted to mention like which shaped up all this yeah i don't know like india is like there are a lot of texts also like where they actually embrace sexuality and all but uh, india in past 200 years is all being about repressing it yeah it's it's always been like against it though like we are the world second most populous country but still nobody even talks about it all we ever know about it is what we come across because of the internet if it was wasn't for the internet i mean you would have stuck being like this forever hmm. like you never even think that this what they're teaching us is like so wrong you know they don't even teach us anything about it you're just supposed to you know do a job and just get married again repeat the cycle that's it nothing more than that no talks about it in open you can't talk to parents about such things it's like a taboo topic you can't really open up properly and even they don't open up yeah hmm. were yeah. you taught those so, sorts of things like in in school like was it was it through sex education uh sex education was there in our school but our school oh my god our school i studied in okay the school which i studied in also follow it was basically a a a uh, foundation of another guru there's another guru uh who runs these ashram and schools together so that's a completely different atmosphere there and they whatever the teachers or whoever they they believed in that guru it's like intertwined everywhere in india right it's just there so even there they were not like kind of open to talk about it though we, they just taught us because there was a chapter right? for them it was just another lesson like yeah this 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 that's it even they were not kind of open like like i remember like when we had the sex education they used to separate us like <laughs> the boys and girls right. girls used to have a separate uh separate class for them separately and we used to have another one separately that's what i, I if i can re- recall it so those things uh, don't help like your teachers you and that's a science teacher you're supposed to tell whatever it is though i know that our minds may have not been ready for it but being uh having your mentality in such a way doesn't help anyway it, it only just like delays your your thinking capacity about such things right so our, our school was like i said believed in another guru so the thing about these gurus is is what i said like they claim that I don't know. I think I'm not sure. I think it's prevalent in Christianity too that they can I don't know sometimes uh, talk to God maybe like mm-hmm. they God talks to them or something. So it's or uh, communicates to them in such a way. It's these things which uh, draws people in because we we think them of them of them as some some special we have some special respect for them because they have something which we normal people don't have. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Is religion over there is it is it a big part of the political system too? Oh, oh my god. That's that's like the major point here. They are like almost clashes, even more blenchings in the name of religion where they just attack each other religion. So the other apart from Hinduism and Christianity here, even Muslims are quite a major not majority quite a number here. Mm-hmm. so there's always constant clashes among hinduism and muslims as to different things they fight over all stupid things like uh they like uh like the politicians here right now if you want to say they they just want to build uh, it's uh bjp is ruling uh, india right now bjp is in power so it's basically like a hindu party so it's all for it it just wants to build like hindu temples in in various spaces but then muslims would come into picture and, and then be like there was a muslim mosque here so you can't there've been clashes there've been killings and i i i really don't know what to say about it like who's better in any way than both both of you guys are just fighting and just destroying each other and and we are growing up in such an environment here it's it's a very big part here it's hmm. it's a very huge part here in india Is that something that only started happening recently or has India always been mm. divided like that? 
I think since it's being divided, like we had partition in 1947. Yeah, yeah. I think since that that was a major point of turn because uh, I think around that time there were a lot many more Muslims in India than they are right now. Mm-hmm. So when the partition happened, the Muslims moved out. They went to Pakistan, and few went to Bangladesh. But whoever are still here, they're just fighting over. So uh, the voting system or making promises are also based upon religious uh, beliefs and opinions or or the religious caste which you're born in. So it's like intertwined very deeply here. Um, I don't know. It, it feels I, worthless to waste our times banging our heads against each other over such things. Right. Like everybody thinks they are right. So that's what's causing the problem. They don't want to question. They think they are right. So they'll just go out all on each other. How do yeah. how do Hindus feel about um, this uh, this leader that's in power right now? Like, is there is there sort of a split between Hindus that want things to be a little bit more peaceful and and Hindus that want um, that that are okay with the violence that's happening? Uh, the 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 government ruling right now is. So Hindus were happy because come on, in Hindus is majority in India, and that party openly supports Hinduism. Right, right. Uh, yeah, so they were happy back then, like when they came into power in 2014. But right now, uh, if, at least if you look in the mainstream media or the people who are actually connected to news, they'll understand that we don't need this divisive politics anymore. It, it's getting us nowhere. It's it's just a waste of time. They're just playing with each other's beliefs and sentiments. The problem is there are a lot, lot of people here who are still uh, very ignorant because they have been, they grew up in such an environment. So, so they, uh, the people here, they, they get swayed away by such big politicians when they make statements on religion. So basically the vote might go there instead of going to some other person also. It might even affect uh, the chances of forming the government. So that's what they did. And that's what they're even trying to do right now. They are trying to change the names of uh, cities, which had, which right now has a Muslim name because there was, uh, at least in Hyderabad or whatever, there was, uh, what do you call, uh, Nizams, they were Muslims. So they named few cities after a Muslim name, but they are creating a diverse politics there by saying, we'll ch- when we come into power, we'll change that into a Hindu name. Like, mm. I don't know, they're, they're going to such an extent, building temples, building huge statues, unnecessary waste of the tax money just to gain seats because the BJP knows right now that it's kind of losing. It it, it it is shown by the recent assembly elections. So they're just firing on all cylinders. Hmm. That, that's how it's going right now. Yeah. Have, um, have your political views changed in the time that you... Um, that you believed um, until the time that you that you now identify as um, agnostic. Uh, honestly, all the time we were growing up, India's political system or the parties which I were there never really interested me a lot because they never did any work. Corruption was a very huge thing in India. They'll just make it's. I think it's the same thing everywhere. Everyone makes the false promises, sells them. But they actually, when they come in, they, they almost do nothing about it. They, they do other things which are completely unnecessary. Mm-hmm. So I never uh, thought to follow any political party or never had any hope that you would actually get better. It's like hmm. the people, okay, the reason why the current party is losing because they didn't work well. The, the, their votes went for the previous party which was in power. It's not that because people like the other party, it's because this party is no good either. So that's why they're voting for them. So it's just uh, to and fro all the time. Hmm. Uh-huh. Um, um, Karan, hmm. there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of noise um, around you right now. I mean, there's it sounds like there's some uh, music that's playing somewhere. It's not music. Uh, it's the Muslims. Uh, what do you call the? They do their. Uh, their prayers, they have a mic, they have a mic placed in every street. So whenever they do their prayers, it's, it's shout out loud. I would say the word, they would, they, they're shouting. Exactly. Oh, wow. So I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry. The, the reason why I even, I came upstairs to prevent some noise from home or whatever. 
but these people have their own timings in throwing with their shout i would i would just say that i was I, I, uh, if i actually said this thing on like national television there will be a huge uproar but here's the thing if you want to pray pray okay fine why you you know telling it i mean preaching it out so loud we don't need this <laughs> pray in your own home or pray at your home mosque or whatever don't have to sh- put it out in big speakers right. there are like speakers everywhere along the lane i'm i'm, I'm really sorry about it no but, no it, it's okay i didn't realize that that was what that what that was um now, so um, how about, um, you know, things like things over here that are sort of divisive? Um, I mean, how, how are things like gay marriage um, and, uh, and other sort of social issues um, relating to, to sex and sexuality um, treated over there um, in India? And, oh. and how have your views about those things changed as, um, as your religion has changed? one big positive thing which india's constitution or the supreme court did was to pass a bill to support homosexuality though there has been huge uproar about it people are very you know they don't want to talk about it they still think it's wrong but the bill is passed so you can't do anything about it but if you actually came out as uh, as gay or even bisexual uh, i don't think they are they be okay with it they're still not even my mom is not kind of okay with there she was actually opposite to that she was like that's wrong they shouldn't have passed it but even i was kind of surprised it was like a little uh, what do you call it? faith in humanity restored <laughs> but uh, they they are not fine still i mean i would say this generation at least the people around me who are of my age are like almost like similar minded they are quite open so maybe if people like us are like in more numbers the future might look different but it's still a lot of things which people don't they they think it's wrong uh even i had my own things like i uh i i was uh, i just i mean not realization but i knew that i was bisexual always like since since i was like in first class or whatever but i would never come out i would never stay at home that i am because they did not accept it I, i would just joke about it at home but i would not actually say that i have been in bisexual relation with one a guy or two but i would not just say that so they're not open yet but hopefully the next generation like i said uh, like us might make the changes so yeah hmm. So you, you in in the United States, I mean, it, it's never as far as I know. I mean, there somebody somebody's probably going to correct me, but as far as I know, just being gay has never actually been illegal. It's been it's it's been frowned upon by a lot of people, but you, there was there's there's never really been um, you know actual legal punishment for for being gay, but. But gay marriage was only legalized recently, and even even with that, only a few states um, have actually legalized um, gay marriage. But what you're describing is that in India, it's actually been illegal to even just be gay and to and to do, you know, to practice things like gay sex. Yeah, I actually think it was illegal because it was just passed recently. Uh, it was no one would want to, you know, talk. or come out because everyone knows the society's reaction to us it's like get married to a woman have kids normally it was not about what the person actually is most importantly mm-hmm. so yeah even now that's what i'm saying even though the bill is passed majority is still not happy with the decision like right. they still think it's wrong so that's 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 a little scary part from other other things that are going on What was the punishment? What was the punishment for being gay? Oh, I don't know. Uh I surprisingly I don't know why but I never read a case about I I I'm sorry but I never researched on what happened if you came out all I knew was they would I don't know take you out from the family or I don't know. They would say just, you know, it's it's in your head or whatever, just get married to a woman and you'll be fine or some some shit like that. They would they would say some things like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Huh. yeah. Huh. So, so um what was that was yeah. that all was that all scriptural? Was that all in um in Hindu books that that's, you know, that is that the reason why it was illegal? I'm not sure. I didn't come across in the Bhagavad Gita about sexuality in sense, 
because uh, uh, there are a lot of actually there are a lot of temples in India which portray uh, like their idols carved out of carved out of stones which portray uh, what do you call even bestiality. I'm not even kidding. They they used to embrace it. That's what I'm saying. There have been numerous texts written. I mean, you must have heard of Kama Sutra. They they actually were kind of open with people experimenting or you know uh, staying with what you are uh, what you associate yourself as. It was kind of fine back then. It was not uh, a close, tight-lipped topic to talk about. But now it's completely the opposite. Like if you see that right now, they they would just see it as obscene. They would not accept the things which have been done in the past. Which, which seems again, funnily enough, because they all accept whatever was there before. Then we could just laugh on those things also, but it's, it doesn't work like that. They just want to take the things which they feel good about, which they think is in right interest, and any things which, you know, comes in contradiction with the faith, they don't question. They just put it out as wrong or whatever. Yeah. yeah, I was I was actually going to ask about the Kama Sutra. Um, it's always been my understanding that it that it has um, a connection to Hinduism, um, and yep. I, I for, just from what you're describing, I mean, it, it sounds as though Hinduism is just as restrictive sexually as any other religion. So, I mean, I I I, I don't know if you have an answer to that, or if you were just kind of trying to figure it out yourself with what you were just saying. But um, I, I mean, it it. What the the way that you're describing about the restrictions sexually? I mean, that doesn't seem to coincide with with being so open sexually as as writing a book to increase sexual pleasure. Yeah, like I I didn't exactly go through it. I just went through a few parts, of whatever I could find online. It's yeah, it does describe various positions in order to in- increase your pleasure, but. Basically, it also describes how you are supposed to, you know, ideally treat your wife or how to live in a marriage. Also, it was teaching a man or a woman to how to engage in a relationship such as a marriage. So it's actually quite the open book. It's not all about that. But here it's the basic thing that it's just all about that. And and since I don't know how it became like this in India, it just became very restrictive to even talk about it. So most people or Hindu nationalists would just frown upon the book. They were like, that's not, that's not acceptable. But in fact, it was written by one of the saints who was there. Hmm. And yeah. So I, I, I own a copy of the Kama Sutra, <laughs> um, but, oh. it's, but I, I haven't, I haven't actually read it all the way through and, um, but you're right. I was actually, as I was asking that, I think, um, I, I, I think it kind of hit me that like, I guess the way that they could have gotten around, you know, it being just about, um, you know, strictly sexual pleasure is just to say that it's about, you know, sex in the, in the confines of, of man and woman being, being married. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that kind of makes sense. Um, does does your family know that you don't believe the guru, don't believe in in Hinduism, and that you're and that you're bisexual? I'm sorry, they started again. I don't know why. That's I'm okay. Sorry about that. That's okay. It's fine. You can hear me, right? Yeah, yeah. I actually can hear you just fine. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it, it took a lot to tell my mom that I I don't believe in him anymore. Like, so she had all her friends or who are the believers to come and counsel me, try to talk me into start believing that again that you are wrong or you should, you know, for them everything is just guru at least like to to, I don't know I'm sorry, it's kind of hard to talk about it because I don't know, it's just quite hard When when you go and visit your family, I mean do you guys do um, do, do, does she still want to do things that are associated with the guru's teachings and um, do, you, do you take part in that with them still? I don't take part anymore but even if I had to go I would just go because most of them don't know that I'm like this now mm-hmm. they still think I'm mm-hmm. still you know I still believe and stuff so I, I just kind of like get along with it it took a lot to tell my mom that I don't believe in all that and I, I told her because they hold Bhagavad Gita as this great scripture. No doubt they are quite a good things about it. But overall, the final conclusion, which 
which the book says was completely unacceptable unacceptable to me so i just told her that that's like one of the i don't know what do you call it's that's what religion is right i don't know it's like kind of like brainwashing that's what i told her and i and i came out as atheist and she was not at all fine she wasn't talking to me well she was like you are lost your way we are on on the right path and i was having lot of uh, mental issues too around that time so she was like if you that's what happens when you give up spirituality it seems everybody needs spirituality to uh stay sane minded at least so that was one of her arguments that it's because you like but the problem was it's because i was there and i believe in that is what caused the whole problem i did try to tell her that but she thinks all these things is otherwise it took her like 2 years for her to kind of be okay at least of me not believing in anything but she of course she still still thinks i'm wrong have you have you told your family that you're bisexual nope Sounds I wouldn't, like that would, I would never. Uh, yeah, it sounds like that never. Would, that would probably be even more difficult to do than telling them that you're an atheist. Uh, that would cause more problems for it we have on our. I mean, few of my friends know it and and they're fine. That's what I said like my group of friends they kind of help me to understand and to open our minds up. So I'm I'm kind of happy to have such friends. But I would never come out to the family. Yeah. So it, it sounds like you've 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 found people that are that are like minded at least. Um, you know, are 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 most of your friends atheists as well, or are they or are they practicing Hinduism or practicing something else, or is or are you sort of associated with people where it's just you know that kind of thing just doesn't really matter? Uh, if we go majority, majority at least like I might even go as well to ninety five percent of them still are in religion, but. the little friends i have belong to that 5% here so most of them don't believe in one all of them question the religions left the faith they believe some of them are atheists some of them agnostic some of them have their own philosophy of life which helps them through the day some of them just want to you know make a difference that's that's one of my friends philosophy just to make a difference in others other person's life and that that's enough it's It's not about believing and and putting it in front of others' face because that's what the uh, the people in the religion here do. Any religion here, they would they would showcase their religion as the best one, and that's that's what they do. So uh, I'm glad I have these few friends who who are kind of like-minded. So they help me, you know, to change, to come out of it. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't actually think I've got any other questions. Um. Do you do you have anything that you that you'd like to tell people anything else that you'd like to say that that maybe I didn't get a chance to um to ask about? Um uh, I can I talk a few things apart before concluding. Sure, absolutely. Go ahead. So yeah, even though we were following a guru or whatever, I didn't believe it wholeheartedly until uh I had problems or whatever. so when we when i went to the ashram and i was having problems so uh, there was a quote which said that i don't know how to translate it. it was in hindi so it's like if you put your trust in anywhere else apart from a god uh you will always end up crying you will always end up being worthless so that was a very polarizing moment for me I, that made me want to believe again to go down the same down again it was like it was like my fault for not you know accepting the truth as it was yeah so that was like one of the defining moments which i tried to again get back into it but only to come out of it om karan and i spoke for a while more about our mental health and the things we do to better our mental health like music it got me thinking about the connection between mental health and religion and i was surprised by what i discovered Despite what Sigmund Freud and Richard Dawkins have said about religiosity being a mental illness, modern studies have found the people who self-identify as highly religious actually tend to have better mental health than those who don't. The reasonings for it have to do with lack of fear of death, feelings of having a purpose, being part of a community, and lower likelihood of taking part in risky behavior such as gambling, sexual promiscuity, drug abuse, and excessive drinking. 
I'd like to go on record right now saying these are all good things. Sometimes I fear death. The idea of serving a greater purpose and being in a community of people who all do so is very appealing. I enjoy poker a lot, and I've never gambled more than I should, but I've gotten that dopamine rush that makes me understand how it could be addictive and damaging. I've had sex with more than one woman, and I'm healthy, but doing so unsafely can definitely lead to addiction, unwanted pregnancy, and disease. Sometimes you need to take medicine, and I think even opiates have their place. But of course, all drugs are addictive. Also, I quit drinking a few years ago because I wanted to make healthy choices, and I definitely feel better than I did when I drank. But there are people who drink casually, and those who drink because they're addicted to doing so. So, if you just look at it from this perspective, religion gets some points for mental health and healthy behavior that can lead to healthy mind and body. The problem that I always sensed with religious reasons to be healthy, though, is that they tend to inspire healthy practices out of fear of displeasing God or gods, punishment after death, or bringing shame to family or community. This might explain why the studies show that the levels of anxiety that religious people feel can be ambiguous. I remember feeling shame and humiliation from people speaking condescendingly about masturbation due to the fact that I probably had done so a few hundred times by the time I found out it was a sin. But I also would feel a sense of warmth and comfort when I was alone thinking about the fact that God was with me. I was able to handle the anxiety, but I also was privileged enough to have had a background in martial arts and blue-collar work, which helped to strengthen me overall. I had enough people in my life to tell me things that contradicted the religious teachings. I've always had creative outlets, and I've also always felt just fine being alone. I also didn't experience fundamentalist education until I was around 13, because I went to a mostly secular school until the middle of 8th grade. Plus, I never experienced sexual abuse or real fear of shunning, violent punishment, or execution. Not everyone is so lucky. And when they aren't, it can lead to suicide, addiction, self-harm, and harming others. So, if health is so important, no matter your religion or lack thereof, why bring religion into it? If you had friends who were only eating healthy foods, but did so exclusively because their spouses would leave with the kids if they stopped, those would be abusive marriages. And if they do manage to get out of them, then they may be put off from both marriage and healthy eating forever. If God truly wanted us to be healthy, he would tell us to be healthy for the sake of health, nothing more. It's funny now thinking about the fact that if God did teach us to be healthy only for our own sake, I would actually have had a lot more difficulty walking away from him. I'm not saying that God being immoral means God isn't real. But for many of us who have lost faith, questions about his nature are some of the first things that lead to questions about his existence. If you're experiencing feelings of guilt and shame, whether it's due to religion or not, please know that you're not alone, no matter how alone you feel. There are Reddit groups for atheists, agnostics, and people who are former members of most religions, each with thousands of users. And I've seen quite a few threads where people ask for someone to talk to, and more than one person responds. If you can talk to a therapist, do so. I'd love to see the stigma of mental health get lifted in my lifetime, and for it to be as normal to get a mental health checkup as it is to get a physical one. Finally, if you're self-harming, feeling completely helpless, or are considering harming others, call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-8255. Their website is in the episode description, and they have an online chat function as well. Whether atheism is the right answer or religion is the right answer, suicide definitely isn't. Again, you really are not alone. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a five-star review and share it with someone you trust. For immediate updates and discussions, follow the show on Twitter at Outfold Podcast. I've also started a subreddit at r slash out of the fold. Special thanks to Om Karan for approving all of this conversation being shared. Logo and artwork by my wife. Production by my wife and I. All music by me. This has been Out of the Fold. <laughs>